October 11th to November 4th, 2022 will go down in the annals of pharmacy history in the Bahamas. It began with concern and then alarm, which led to camaraderie, unity, and an impressive display of solidarity. A group of professionals who often fly under the radar, often the least focused on in the healthcare profession. They stand behind counters and locked doors to secure medication that provide treatment and healing for the sick. Pharmacists are not just pill counters. They are trained in disease processes, how medication work, how drugs interact with each other, and how they affect the body. A level of training that even physicians do not have. In many countries, the only level of training now available for pharmacy is a PharmD degree, which is a doctor of pharmacy. The government of the Bahamas had announced on October 11th a price control initiative that would have lowered the profit margins of most if not all of pharmacies and pharmaceutical wholesalers to below their operational cost. The escalating cost of living, the previous announcement of the government of increased electricity bills, the high cost of business licenses and real property tax, the high cost of shipping, the escalating crime rate, increasing their need for security against theft and even death, and the constant threat of losing thousands of dollars in expired drugs daily with more than they could bear. Pharmacists from across the Commonwealth of the Bahamas, every island, east, west, north, and south, came together and decided the only way to deal with this problem was head on. They needed a meeting with the government. On Friday, October 14th, a meeting was held between the Minister of Health Pharmacists and wholesalers were able to share their concerns and ask for reconsideration of the 15% and 18% markups that were imposed for wholesalers and the 35 and 40% markups that had been imposed for retailers. Another meeting was held with the pharmacists on October 21st between government and pharmacists expressing a more detailed approach to the problem. Until pharmacists could be assured that the deadlines given would not put them in jeopardy of price control infractions, they could not rest. It took time to get back to the government with a written document as the pharmacy community extends to other islands and the Bahamas Pharmaceutical Association wanted an input from everyone as the community includes small, medium-sized, and large retailers and wholesalers. There was a particular concern for family island pharmacists, many of whom struggle even now with the high cost of getting the drugs to them. On Thursday, October 27th, the pharmacist's concerns in writing were delivered to the government, but during that same week, it was announced in a government press conference while the pharmacists thought negotiations were still going on, that the pharmacy community would have to comply with the amendments by November 1st. That was only days away. Wholesalers and retailers had yet to change prices. There was no agreement of any new markup and they didn't have time. No one was prepared. Prayers were going up and there was grave concern because of the hefty fine of at least $5,000 attached to a single infraction of price control, no pharmacy, and especially not the smaller ones, was prepared for what could cause a complete shutdown of their operations. Calls were made on the following day to ask for feedback from the government, but none was forthcoming. Pharmacies, not wanting to risk being in breach of the law, come Tuesday, November 1st, decided to make the hard decision of closing down and going to the office of the Prime Minister for an appointment to see him. On Tuesday, November 1st, many standalone pharmacies, both big and small, and some major wholesalers in the Commonwealth of the Bahamas closed their doors. There was, however, access to medication at every hospital and every government clinic, and just about every private clinic. Many clinics have pharmacies, many of them remained open. This decision by the pharmacists caused a serious backlash 
from the community, many of whom were not even aware of the plight of the pharmacist and of course had got the attention of the government. It became abundantly clear just how important pharmacy is. Many pharmacies, after reassurance of a meeting with the government, reopened their doors in the early afternoon on November 1st. The message had been sent. Another meeting was held between the pharmacists and the government on November 2nd, where suggestions were put forward by the Bahamas Pharmaceutical Association and accepted. The government agreed to increase the markups to 20% for wholesale and stay at a fixed markup of 40% for retail. The government also agreed to change the price controlled categories to actual items making it a lot less confusing as to which items were actually price controlled. The previous list extended in some cases to as much as 60 to 70 percent of what some businesses sold. The new list created represents the medication most used and needed and recommended by the World Health Organization among others. The jury is still out on how this would ultimately affect the pharmacists and wholesalers in a changing economy with increasing inflation rates. But the pharmaceutical industry in the Bahamas know that this decision would give them a better chance of not only reducing cost to their valued customers, but a chance to sustain their businesses and reduce the threat of businesses shutting down and job loss. October 11th to November 4th, 2022. Truly a trying but inspiring time to see pharmacists stand up and work together in a show of solidarity to protect not just their businesses but the profession of pharmacy and the obligation that they have to provide the best professional care in the Commonwealth of the Bahamas for their many valued customers who depend on them daily to survive.